Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be helping a patron with their project to create this ornamental leg. Now the patron has already started with the project and asked for some help to go forward. So at the moment the project stands like this. There is a lot going on in this project. There's a lot of experimentation and the problem that they're having is this leg here. So this is using the Curves Shapes workbench. And you can see from when we look from the top, we've tried to contain this loft with the profiles. And you can see the profiles are going off to the side and it's not really working in there. So we're going to look to tackle that. First of all, we're going to take the project itself and simplify it down to what we're looking at. We're just looking at this part here for now. We're going to learn to extract out those parts and use both the sketcher and draft workbench to realign them on the base planes. So you can see I simplified the sketch by realigning them on the base planes. And we're going to use some tools in the draft workbench to make this a lot easier. So we're going to really understand how the draft workbench can help us in this scenario. Our next stage will be creating the leg itself. So this is the finished leg ready for assembly. So we're going to learn how to contain those profiles in there to create this object with the simplified sketches. In a further video, we'll learn how to assemble this with the rest of the parts in the assembly. So this is a multiple video episode for this patron. The first job we're going to do is create this object itself. Now, please note that if you're starting out with FreeCAD, that there are a lot of unknown unknowns. It's only easy if you know how. And that's what these videos are for. When you create a project, you're going to do a lot of experimentation in there. And that's what's happened with this one. So you can see there is a lot of experimentation and we're going to offer up some tips also to simplify this project and to give an understanding of how a project fits together. So I've hoped the patron finds this first video useful. Hope you found it useful out there. Let's have a look how we create this model. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. So I've opened up the Patreon's file and already I can see there's quite a lot going on here. Looks like there's been quite a lot of experimentation, but we're going to concentrate on the main feature that we want to tackle. And that's this leg here. So if I have a look at it, I can see there's been some experimentation with basically two types of curved array. So we've got the curved array and the curved path array. Now these differ and if we look at this, what we're trying to do, let's get rid of this one. Let's press the space bar. What they're trying to do is create this profile and follow, if I click on that and press the space bar to hide that, this profile needs to follow this edge here, this path, and contain within these boundaries. And there's been two attempts, the curved path array is the way to go with this because if we look at the profiles, they follow this path. So they keep in the right direction along that path. If we look at the curved array and look at the profiles in that, that's hide the curved path array and come down to the solid as false, the surface as false. That's a curved path array. We need the curved array. Solid, let's set that to false. You notice that the profiles are basically flat. So we don't get the flowing lines that we want for this model. Everything's a bit basically pointing upwards. We want it to flow in this type of direction. We get a much better transition between the profiles, but we can see that the Patreon has obviously had problems trying to control these profiles with these sketches. There's also quite a lot of other stuff going on with the legs, 
and all of this and we'll take a look at that later but let's get the main feature out of the way first so this is the curved path array so when i look at a model i look at it from the different planes and i can see that this has been sketched at an angle this way you can see them more at an angle this way and this is because if i look at the hexagon that's running around the outside i am guessing these are where the legs have to connect up and this is a nice way of doing it because we can have three legs and a leg going this way but it's best to tackle the leg on its own so what we'll do is separate that out into a separate file and we'll reorientate this upon the base plane so if you toggle axis cross you can see we've got the axis cross and we'll reorientate it in line with these axes this means that we can then either link or use it as an assembly and place them where they should be in a separate file a separate project this makes it a lot easier to control the different items within our project and also a lot easier when designing them because we don't have to worry about for instance this sketch here i click on that and double click on it we don't have to worry about placing it at this angle like this because straight away we lose the vertical and the horizontal constraints and we we reduce the amount of available constraints that we use in the project so i'm going to close out of there and let's start by first getting rid of the curved path array we don't want the curved array we can get rid of that and we're looking at the boundary curves and the profile so this is the profile and these are the curves or the sketches that we want to use to create the leg i'm going to isolate these into another project so i'm going to start a new project new project come back to our project file and i'm going to select just by clicking on the edges and you see the sketch appears on the left hand side i'm going to control select the edges for the sketches and that's the same sketch that's, that's fine that i want to move into the new project so i've selected that edge then it's showing me that i've selected the sketch there so this is all fine so i've selected all those sketches in there edit and copy now when we copy the object it's going to select everything so i want to only take these sketches highlighted here so these ones here so if i uncheck all and then select say the sketch you'll see that we get the dependent object selected let's unselect all again and uncheck auto select dependent objects so when i select sketch 384 and all the ones that are in bold then nothing else gets selected once i've selected those let's go okay that's copied those they're in memory now if i go back to the new project and come up to edit and paste you see all the sketches have been placed in there but we can't see them at the moment and this is just because of the viewpoint so our viewpoint is away from where these sketches are set let's come up to view and toggle axis cross and i'm going to select one of the sketches and use the fit all so we can see where the axis cross is and where the sketches actually sit so we want to now reorientate this to make it simpler we're going to set them upon the base plane so the xz base plane and it's just simplifying it really to do that well we don't have to rotate them freecad gives us the tools to allow us to reposition those so let's come over to the sketcher so the first one i'm going to reposition well, let's start with sketch 384 this one here and i want to reposition this along this plane here the x z plane so i've selected that sketch come up to sketch reorientate sketch x z plane pick the x z plane and hit ok it says, do you want to open the sketch validation tools? The sketch is invalid and cannot be edited. 
I'm going to click yes. Now, the reason for this is that we may have a constraint that is a reference from external geometry. So when you pull in, say, external geometry, it creates a line, a curve, or a point, and we connect, say, this point to that point from the reference. That's obviously not there anymore because it's moved to a different plane or a different position. So in here, we've got highlight travels and vertices, which when we check that is going to highlight because well, it's not a closed sketch, so we don't have to worry about those. It's an open sketch. And if we come down, we've got invalid constraints here. If we hit find, that's found the invalid constraints and we click fix. If I hit find again, you can see we haven't got any invalid constraints. So let's hit close. That should be all fine now. You've got a tick by it to recompute, edit, refresh or the control r depending on what operating system you're on and that's refreshed now and i can come into that sketch now and as you can see it's sitting upon this plane and it's positioned itself quite near to the center point as well so this is a good start let's close that and we can repeat the process for the others so we're simplifying our sketches let's take this sketch now sketch 387 which will be both these edges. Sketch, reorientate sketch, place it along the X, Z plane, and hit OK. Saying, do you want to open the sketch validation tool? Sketch is invalid, cannot be edited. If I click no, the sketch is sitting here. If I double click it, it's still going to ask me to open the validation tool. So hit yes. That's finally valid constraints and fix them and hit close. So we can come into that sketch now. We can see that sketch there. And you can see straight away, we've got this external geometry over here. And this was the invalid constraint. So it's removed itself. Now I know it's external geometry because it's pink in color. And we come down, we can see some external geometry here, this one here. We could use the filters. And we've got all types selected. That's uncheck, normal, constraint, internal. Just leave external and all the types, arcs, ellipse, etc. And you'll see there's just one in there, the B spline. So we can click on that and hit delete. And let's just place those back because we need these for the other sketches. Let's hit close. So we've moved that sketch now, and it's the same process. This one's going to be a bit different. It's going to be on a different plane. So this one's going to be on the YZ plane. So let's do that. Let's use the toolbar this time. So we've got this one here, which is the same item from the dropdown, reorientate sketch. Click that. And we want the YZ plane and hit OK. And that's thrown a straight to the sketch, so it's not invalid. And that's it in there. That's absolutely fine. Let's close that. And now we've got this one. This bit's a bit interesting. Looks like there's a bit of a trimming problem there. This hasn't been trimmed off. So let's reorientate that. So I'm going to take that. It actually is on the right plane. It's on the XY plane. But what I'm going to do is take that and reorientate it. X, Y plane, it's going to go on there, but it's going to push it upwards upon that plane and it needs validating. Let's hit yes. Find the invalid constraints and fix them and close that. So we've got that now. Now, when I'm looking at this, we can see it's off at an angle as well. Let's edit and refresh that because we've got the tick. And if we look at the placement, the placement's all okay. The position's all okay all zeroed so that tells me that this is sketched at an angle double click that sketch so now we've got the sketch open we can see what we've got so we can see this is coming off at an angle i really want this to be over this way you can see we're in line and what's happened is that the sketch how this has been sketched is at an angle from these two axes so we draw a line this way, it's at an angle. So we want to bring this around in this sketch. Now, this 
is quite awkward to do in the sketch because if I start pulling these, we're going to get deformation. If we had something like a number of rectangles, then we could rotate them, move them, etc. by bringing them into position and manipulating the geometry in there. But there is a way around this. So I want to bring this around this way. Let's close out and let's bring back the axis cross because we've lost that. So we can see that there. If I come over to the draft workbench, the draft workbench has a number of tools to manipulate 2D geometry. I'm going to come down and turn the gridding off. So this sketch here is currently a sketch. So I'm going to look from the top and I'm going to select the sketch and come up to modification and use this draft to sketch. Now this converts by directioning between draft objects and sketch objects. So if it was a sketch, then it become a draft. If it was a draft, it becomes a sketch. So I click on that now. What we do get is the original sketch still sitting there. Let's press the space bar on that. And now we get these two sketch items. So these are wires, just plain wires sitting there. I can now take both those wires, control click them, select both of them. And then what we could do is come up to modifications and draft a sketch again. This is now a sketch. Let's delete those two wires. And now if I double click on this sketch, you can see that we've reset the sketch along this axis. But the problem is, is that, well, we've lost all our control points for our B-spline. So we've got that issue to deal with now. Let's come up to sketch and look at the B-spline tools and convert geometry to B-spline. If I click that now, we get all of our control points back and let's do on the other side sketch sketch b spline tools and convert geometry to b spline so we've got all those back now we've got the b spline manipulation tools in there hit control z and we're good to go now one other thing that i've noticed if i zoom in here we've got a bit of a problem with this curve as you can see it connects up to this point but it actually comes past, and this is just a point on line constraint, if that's even a point on line constraint, which is not, let's control Z that. So that's trim this. If I try to trim that at the moment, you can see this green circle here. So this should trim up to that point. And let's do this again, and you can see the green circle, trim once again, and that's become a point on object constraint. I'm going to hit escape to get a mouse pointer back. You can see we've got this point on line constraint. So let's take those two, unselect the circle, and make a coincident constraint. And you can see we've got a redundant constraint there. So I'm going to control Z that. And we obviously got some problems in here. So let's take away this point on object constraint. Let's delete that. And let's pull this out just slightly to see what we got. And select these individually and go for coincident constraint. So that's done it there. Obviously we were selecting something else with the multi select in there. And maybe it could have been this constraint, but I don't know what was selecting there, but we've got that one in there. And we've got that position that hits close. So we've got these positioned all on the primary plane. So we've got the X, Z plane, which is these on, we got the XY plane, which got this on, and we got the YZ plane. So we simplified that sketch there. We don't need this sketch 386 because that was that sketch, which we took the draft from. Let's delete that. And now we've got a number of sketches in here, which we can use in the curve shape workbench. And quickly rename these. So this is the top profile. This is our cross section.
This one is the side profile. And then we have this one, which is, I believe that one's the path. So that's a path, right click and rename that. That's the path. So remember we had a number of different curve shapes in there. We had two, we had one that followed this path and one that didn't, that was just using these as whole curves. And the one that follows the path is the correct way to go because we get that nice alignment and nice flow and all the profiles don't stay on the vertical with their normals going in the same direction. They actually align with this path here. So now we've got that, we can use the Curve Shape Workbench to deal with just this object. Let's save this. And call it Leg Rebuild and save that off. So now we have all of that saved and we're ready to move on to the Curve Shape Workbench. So the next stage is we're going to utilize the Curve Shape Workbench and see how we get on with this now. Now we've separated this out in a separate file and we're on these primary planes. So let's come back to the leg and see our problems. So if I look and that's height, the, we've got the curved path array and that's the right one to use. So if we look at the curved array and press the space bar, let's have a look at this curved path array and we can see, well, we're losing the profiles they're spinning out over the side. We look from the top and we can see the profiles are at an angle going this way. So we're losing the effect that we want. Let's come back to our new file. And the first thing I'm going to do is create the same object in here. So we're going to be using the Curve Shapes Array and this is an external workbench which can be installed from the add-on manager and you'll find the Curve Shapes Workbench in there. So with this, we first need our profile, this one here. So you can see it's selected on the left-hand side and we need the path that's going to follow this one here. So you can see both those selected there. And then we use this one, the Curve Path Array. And if we click that, that's placed all those along there. We've only got the free along there. So let's increase the items. So that's net coming down. We look at the items. Let's increase this to 30 and see what happens. So we're looking good across there. And let's increase that a bit more. So like 50. And what I'm looking for is making sure that we don't have any fall off of profiles and one thing that we have got is that we need to make sure that this line is in line with our path. Because this boundary curve, if you look to see where this stops, this path, it's not stopping in line with this. So we may end up getting some leakage when we try to contain it with these whole curves. So let's click on the whole curves, click that, and we're gonna pick the side profile and okay that. And straight away, you can see that we've got a problem here. So let's have a look in the curve path array because the side profile has been moved inside it. Let's double click that. And we'll place these two in line. And also we place this one and this one in line. Therefore, those will be in line now. And let's hit close. So now we've got, well, the profiles moved to the other side now, but these are in line. So this should, let's increase this up to 60 and have a look, see what we've got. So we've still got a profile that is escaping there. Now, the good thing about the curved path array and the other array is that if we look down, we've got a start and an end offset. So we can set these, I set this one to one and you see that has been removed, that profile. So we can do some trimming in there if we can't contain it 
within our boundaries if we have one that goes off into the weeds somewhere. So we've got that side. Let's have a look, see if we can contain it from this top here. Now I can see straight away, we've got that profile there. That's just set the end to one. There we go. I think we've got the same over here. So we work over here. Let's see if we can get this whole curve, this one here to contain this object. So curve path array, we look at the whole curves again. We click in there. We've already got one selected and that's that the top profile now, this one. And hit OK. And well, we have it contained, but you can see, well, we've got some problems around here. And this is probably due to how far this is away. You see it's pulling the profiles up. So by rights, if we rotate these upwards to be within here, then we should be able to control this shape with these whole curves because it almost be like a border around here, almost like containing it with a rubber band. So we established that we need to rotate these whole curves and this path around this way. But we've got a problem as in the side profile and the placement and the angle and the axis are not correct. So I tried to rotate it around the Y with this one. If I place a one in here and a zero in here, you can see, well, it's going off onto a different plane. Let's put that back. So what do we do? Well, we've got the draft workbench again that comes into play. The 2D draft workbench is extremely useful for rotating, moving, and manipulating 2D geometry. Let's hide that curved path array. Get out of the way, press the space bar on that. We've got these snapping tools. Now you can see the padlock is on. So we've got this gray background, the padlock on, and we've got snap, endpoint, center point, and midpoint. You may find these over here somewhere. And what normally happens is these are shrunk up and you'll just see a padlock somewhere and you can open that up and drop it down and select which ones you want there. First thing we need to do is enable the gridding. So we've got the gridding down here. If you don't see it, just click on it. And what will happen is that you should see some gridding appear. Make sure nothing's selected. We're gonna set the working plane. We need to set the working plane to the front. At the moment it is set to the front, but let's pretend it's not. So let's just quickly come in here and set it to align to view. And let's try that again. Let's give it a different one, align to view. So this is aligned to the view now. So you can see that if we look from the top, then our grid is all over the place. Let's click on the front and bring this in. There is a number of ways of setting the grid in, but because we're working on these planes, these base planes, then we can just click on the front, make sure nothing's selected, come up to utilities, select plane, and then select front. We are now aligned, the working plane is now aligned with the front. It may look like this is behind, but this is absolutely fine. If I click, you can see the working plane has disappeared. That grid has disappeared, but it is there. That means that when we start to move this, it will be in line with that working plane. If we had a working plane, say, over this way, if we try to move or rotate, then it will start snapping to the working plane and it's not upon the right plane, which can cause us problems. First thing I'm going to do is rotate this. Let's zoom in. The snapping is on. And I'm going to select both the path and control select the side profile. Come to modifications and select rotate. It's going to ask us for the point that we're going to use for the rotation point. Now, because we've got the snapping on, you'll notice that we can snap to anywhere, including other objects. So we can use those as rotation points. I want to come into here, this point here, and this is going to be my point of rotation. Click once, and now I get this line. 
And I'm going to come down and find the point that I'm going to handle the rotation with. So this is going to be where we're going to drag from. So I'm going to snap to this point here. You can see we've got this icon up here. Snap endpoint. So snapping to that endpoint. Click. And once we let go, we can move this. And we just need to find where we're going to drop this. So you can see how it's moving up. I'm rotating around this point here. Because we've got this line going here, I can snap to the center point or the end point of this line and place it in the correct position. So click, and now it's placed in the correct position. If we bring the curved path array back by pressing the space bar, you can see this is nicely placed now, but there is a problem. Because we've rotated this, we can now see that this whole curve that runs around here is not containing this overflow here, this overflow here. So this needs to be increased. So by increasing that profile, we can contain the rest of these curves. And you can see straight away, we're already solving the problem that we had. Let's turn the gridding off. And the next step will be take it from the top and edit this profile. So we want to contain these profiles here. We would need to edit the underlying sketch from the top profile and move this out this way. But there is an easier way of doing this. Let's close that. I'm going to use the draft tools. Let's just hide the grid in a minute. So I'm going to use the draft tools to extend this. So this is going to be a draft clone in the end. So we take the top profile and we're going to clone it. Come up to modifications, clone. That creates a clone of that. Let's hide the top profile, click on it. Press the space bar. This is now a clone. Now the reason why I've cloned this is that the clone has scaling. Look down the bottom, we've got this scale. And I can bring this out and scale along the X axis. Let's go for 1.1 on the x-axis. See how this is scaled out this way? Let's go a bit further. Go for 1.15. It's gone out that far. We can now replace, if I click on the curve path array, the whole curve, click on the button on the end of that field, we've got top profile, Unselect that and select the top profile. So we're replacing the profiles. And you can see that's gone all the way to the bottom there. And we can adjust this as well. If we look from the top, we can see that this curves around this way, which is what we want. And if we wanted to adjust the top profile, we can do that by coming into the scale and just scaling this back to say 1.1. 1 .1. And we're getting the control that we need. And you can see that, well, we've gone past there, but we've created this profile here, and this may be sufficient of what we want. So you can see that there. Or we may want to bring these down further so we get more profiles. Let's look at this end as well, make sure that we're okay this end. Remember that we've got the curved path array, we've got the offset end and offset start. So I've got the offset end set there. Let's zero that one. And you can see, well, when we zero it, we get an extra profile here. So we still need that bit of trimming. So let's put one back in there. That's fine. So I can see this moves up this way. Remember that we're following the path. So the path starts here. So we may want to move this path up further by double clicking on the side profile. And well, it's not the side profile, it's the actual path. Let's double click the path. And we may want this to move up to say here. And hit close. So we're following that now. And I don't know if we've got an extra profile on that, but I know we've got this one here, which is no good. But look how this is following this path. So this path determines 
the trajectory of these cross sections. So if we want, let's come up and look at the top profile and look at the curved pathway, just press the spacebar on that so we can see those cross sections. So this is the path. If I bring this around, now if I go edit, refresh, that will move these into position so I can see what way I want these. Edit, refresh, and well, let's not press the space bar, let's press the Alt to bring this around, depending on what I'm on the touchpad control. So if I hover over that, you can see different methods here, and we can change those if we want. So I'm on the touchpad. So the Alt allows me to rotate. And well, because I've changed that path, you can see I've got a nice transition to that end. We've got a nice flat part here. So remember your path controls the positioning of these profiles. How they align along that path. And that's a good trick when you're in here, just to click on it, show the path array, and then move these into position, edit, refresh, or use the shortcut, whatever it is for your operating system, mine's control R, and we get those nicely aligned. All right, let's align that. I'm looking at this one here, and just aligning that. That will do me. Add to task, hit close. Now we've got the profile at the end. Nice clean profile. We've got a rogue profile at this end. Look at the front there. You can see that one there. Maybe we want to bring these in together. But remember, we've got the offset end. Let's place that as three. Maybe a bit too far. Let's try two. That's good. And then take the curved path array. Still needs a refresh. There we go. Take the curve path array and then come down and set it to solid as true. Now, one thing to remember is that the items, we have this high set 60. This could cause an issue like so. So we have to juggle this. Rather than increase it, decrease it. Let's go half. So I set it to 30 there, you can see that's worked nicely. And this side is looking good. And if we look at this, well, there is some bumps in here. Depends on what type of styling we want for this. If I look at this, well, we've got this going this way. Let's increase this. So we've got 30, let's go 40. There we go. We don't want to take it too far. Otherwise we start getting that deformation. And also if we go too far the other way going less profiles, then it doesn't fit as well. And I'm quite happy with that. I know from the Patreon, we don't want a ball end in here. They're looking at something like a lion's paw, which is going to be interesting actually to try to get that in with this. But because we've got this cross section here, you can see we've got a straight section. We could probably blend something in from an STL or something like that for a lion's paw or create something and figure out how we're going to do this. If I wanted to change this a bit more, I can change the side profile, bring this around this way, curve it around more. So we get a more of a cleaner finish to the end rather than this straight cut off. For instance, come to the side profile. And start to bring these inwards. I need a bit more on the B splines and close that. And you see how we start to go inwards there. And we get a cleaner finish. So we are getting to the point where I can use this back in the original project. 
So we've got to that stage where we've isolated the leg, understood how we control those profiles, those boundary curves, and we can move on to the next stage where we'll look at taking this leg and assembling the net in another project, pulling in the leg to the assembly and using the same hexagon that's in here to place it in the correct position. We'll also look at isolating the other parts in the project and including those in the assembly. So I hope you found that video useful and I hope to see you in the next one. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.